Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics, right on this little part three video of how to breed your neon dwarf rainbow fish. We've got some little hatchlings. Now, if you look up in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you're gonna see a little cloud of hatched out little rainbow fish, little dwarf neon rainbows that we've seen in the spawning mop. Um, in the last video where I showed you them after they laid the eggs and we pulled that spawning mop from the uh, from the tank and I just went through it with you, showed you the eggs and then we put it into that big bunch as you can see on the floor there. Now, it's been a, quite a few days, been nearly a week since they've uh, since those eggs were laid and I moved the parents over to my big tank, my big bench tank. And these guys are zipping away, lovely, nice and healthy. There's still loads of little eyes looking out at me through these uh, little egg cases in amongst that spawning mop. I'll try and get you some close-up pictures shortly. I did a bit yesterday, um, which I'll edit into this video as well, so you can see them. I've got some quite close-up shots, and you can see the eyes, little eyes moving away in the eggs, which is quite nice to see. You're looking at those little tiny beady eyes right in the middle of the screen there. Now, they are the rainbow fish fry. They're about to hatch maybe today or tomorrow, but I'll keep you posted on what's going on. Super cute little guys. They're all eyes at this age. I'll try and get you as close in as I can without it getting too pixelated. You may see them move in the eggs. I think that's about as best as I'm going to get you guys without tips there going out of focus there. But there you go, you can see them all there. And there's quite a few around the place if you look. You can see little pairs of eyes staring at us from all over the place. Let's see if I can find any more. You can see that. You can normally see their eyes when they get to a certain stage. They sort of tend to glow. As you can see there, there's quite a few all over the place there in between the fronds of the spawning mop. But I'll keep you guys updated. Like I said, they should hatch out probably today, I would have thought, by the look of them. So I'll keep you posted. Well, we've got a nice little cloud up on the surface there. Good maybe 20 so far. And like I said, I, I did take that spawning mop out. Once rainbows get conditioned and they start to breed, what they'll do is they'll go, they'll dive into that spawning mop every single morning, release some eggs for a good week um, before they empty themselves out. And each time they lay eggs, they'll become less and less eggs every time they go into that spawning mop. So normally you can leave it for a week. If you want a heap of these guys out, leave it in for a week. Um, and then pull it at the end of the week and then you'll find you'll have a lot more than I have but reason like I said in part two was because I didn't want to be bringing up hundreds and hundreds of these things and bringing loads of little fish into the world and not having anywhere to put them later on so what I've done is I've just got out maybe 20 maybe 30 we're going to lose some of those mortality rate is going to take its toll on some of the weaker ones the disfigured ones that we can't see some with crooked spines that kind of stuff which does happen sadly but when you get into breeding fish, these are one of this is one of the things that you've got to uh, you've got to be aware of that you're not going to bring every single one of the fry on. What I've got here now as well, I've bought the Infusoria culture in. I'll show you that shortly. I'll bring it out into the workshop for all you guys that are new to the channel. It's micro life, which you breed in little jars, little tubs, buckets, anything you want. Um, I'll go through that with you again in a minute for those of you who are new to the channel. And if you are, hit the old subscribe button if you like these videos and that notification bell for every new video that I post up you'll be notified of it and you can follow along on these little breeding projects that I'm doing or pop back and have a look at the uh, little library of breeding videos that I've done in my playlists okay but what I've got here is a little pipette full of infusoria which is micro life like I said and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very very carefully drip some in the water in fact what I'll do is I'll just readjust you up into that top corner bear with me Right, that's a little bit better, you can see there. Got a little bit of moisture there behind my, my old bin liner, which I've put behind. I've got a glass lid on the top and it leaks a little bit of water down the back, as you can see up around there, that motley effect. It's a bit of water there, but I've got some infusoria in the old turkey baster in there, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna very, very carefully drip that in and you'll see these little guys going in like little white specks, okay?
I don't know if you can see them in that water column there. I'll put a few more in. There they go. Now you can see them going in. Look at that lot. And they're just going to keep going around in the water. And those little guys should start picking them off in no time at all. I'll just slide my little lid back over the top again. Now what I've done is I've put my marine light on there. I think I've spooked them slightly. Right, there you go guys. You can see that infusoria now in the water, in the water column. And what I'll try and do now is I'll get you up the top there in amongst these little guys. And you may see them. It's going to be very hard. These are super small. There you go. Look at that. He got one. Little eyes. It's going to be hot. I'm, I think what I'm going to have to do is um, is literally just watch for a minute, and then you'll see them come into frame and take one out. Hopefully. There he goes. You see him gobbling the, <laughs> that one up on the surface. There. It's fantastic to watch. It really is. We go a bit higher. Whoop! He nearly had that one. But they're going around now and they're picking them off one by one and it doesn't take much to fill these little guys up. But the good thing about the Infusoria live food is, guys, is that it's not going to decay in your tank, okay? It's going to stay alive, it's going to feed off of biofilm, bacteria and things in your tank. So it's not going to die and pollute your water off, okay? Let me go back a bit. You might get a better view. I'm going all freehand now, so it might be a little bit juddery. But there's quite a few of these little guys up in the water column now. It might be back, further back might be a little bit better still, so you can see them. I tend to just keep my eye on one of them and watch that one. But like I said guys, these guys are super, super small. They really are tiny. And the Infusoria are microscopic and you can see from the size of them to the size of that microlife that they're trying to eat. How small they really are. Now what I've done is I've put one of my marine lights on there that I'm going to be installing into my coral room when that's getting up and running. And, um, and what it's got, it's got that UV sort of spectrum in there, okay, that royal blue light which you can see in the water. Now that tends to pick them out quite clearly without that with just normal light on there you can hardly you can't you can hardly see them because of their size but with this light on you can it picks them out a little bit better for you guys to see now if I go down in amongst the spawning mop if we're lucky and this camera plays the game right there you go guys if you look directly right in front of the screen there right in the middle You'll see a little pair of eyes there looking at you out of a little egg. And that's one that hasn't hatched yet. I'll try and get a little bit of additional light on it for you. There you go, you can just see his eyes shining there. But there's a few little legs still, still around, still stuck on that spawning mop. And there'll be lots and lots more inside it. Well, there you go, guys. We've got some little baby rainbows out. And as usual, what I'll do is I'll give you step by step as the weeks progress. I'll put a, a little, um, another video to it, just showing you how these guys are getting along. Like I did with the neon video, I did that one from start to finish. Certain ones I'll do from start to finish, but I can't really do them, do them all. I've got so much going on and things to do, I'll be filming forever. So it's one of them things that you can go back if you want to see the process from any of the, the fry larvae stage. Once you get it to this stage, okay, you've got to have that infusoria culture, okay, that's imperative, like I keep saying, you must have that to get them going. I've never found liquid fry foods any good whatsoever, or egg yolks and things of that nature. I just, I just think they pollute the water up, and you're going to lose a lot more fry that way. This is the natural way, nature's way of feeding fish, with natural food, and you will not better this way of, uh, of breeding fish, you really won't. And like I say, all the years that I have been breeding fish, and like I say, I've been in this hobby now for 40, 40 odd years, and um, and I've never used any other thing apart from 
this method and it's always served me really, really well. So I think what we'll do is now is we're going to shoot across to the bench tank and I'll show you how the parents look because they were quite dull actually when they were in, in this tank. Um, and we'll, I'll show you how, how their colours have popped since they're in their more of a natural environment, okay? Right, okay guys, you can see them parents there, the rainbow fish. Those reds and those males are really standing out now. Look at that, absolutely stunning fish. They really are, and there's a little female there. Full of eggs yet again, but you can see they're, they're all waiting for some more bloodworms. And they've settled in really, really nicely now back in the tank. Looking stunning. Right, I think what I'll do now is I will go across and I'll just show you this Infusoria culture if, uh, if any of you, you guys are new to the channel and to breeding fish in general. I'll show you what they look like, okay? Right, okay guys, there's the Infusoria culture. Now you can see them in the, uh, in the tube right in front of you there. All those thousands upon thousands of little white dots cruising around in the water column, swimming away. And in this little um ch t little tub here um i've used a banana skin okay and it's been in here for around 10 days uh, we've got a beautiful big culture now as you can see it's a very very tall pot it's one of our big acrylic tubes and i've filled it up it's about i don't know maybe 15 inches high this one by a, about four inches around so it's quite a big tub and as you can see there is thousands upon thousands of them now i've just moved it because they tend to congregate on the surface and I've shook it around a bit so they've started they've dispersed all around the place and I've turned the light on and with them being photo tactic which means they are attracted to light they're going for my strip light now so they're sort of migrating around to try and find that light I'll try and get a little bit closer in for you see how close I can get without uh, without it going distorted so you can sort of see what these little guys look like they're like little wiggly worms if you have a look and that is Infusoria. Now that is micro, micro life. Okay. And then this is in your fish tanks all the time. It's in your, it's on your plants. It's on your glass. It's everywhere. But the fish will predate on it, especially small charisins. They will like tetras and things. They'll pick it up. So there's never enough in your system to feed the growing fry because it's a captive body of water. The fish pick them off quite quick but doing it like this you create an environment just for them it's like their own aquarium and they will absolutely boom in population as you can see here they really do um, they really they really grow quick and multiply in their millions um, and they're the best first food fry food you're going to get on ev ever it's what what I say it's what nature's provided them with and And you will not beat this for a first for a first food and that goes for all your fry it doesn't matter how big or you know i mean some fish are big enough to take brine shrimp freshly hatched but i always tend to throw these guys in first and it just makes sure even the smallest of your fry they're going to have a good good healthy start in life and then they'll progress on to the bigger foods later on the water worms banana worms all the micro worms different things like that but this is an amazing first food it really is and there's millions look at that now when you do it with the broccoli culture guys if you go back i'll link the infusoria culture and how to do it from start to finish in the description below okay so you can go back and follow that if you're new to the channel all you need is tank water a bit of boiled broccoli just chuck it in there anything green green beans lettuce a bit of cabbage anything like that just boil it up throw it in there obviously once it's cooled down add some tank water not uh, fresh water at your tap because of the chlorines and uh, chloramines. You just want to add normal tank water and a little bit of pond life, or sorry, a little bit of plant life, like I've added there, a little bit of Saswasa tang and a little bit of rickia at the top, which I've pulled out of one of my tanks. And um, and you add that to the uh, to the culture. And then within 10, you know, within 10, 10 days or so, you're gonna get, you're gonna get all these. And it's gonna stink, but you've got to put, you've just got to stick with it, okay? Stick it by an open window in a sunny spot not direct sun but good light and warmish and they will colonize in their thousands as you can see there and they literally just move around like clouds of starlings in the water look at that they seem to move all in one 
all as one organism. It's quite, it's quite amazing to watch these little guys swim. The little coordinated little sweeps and throws that they do. Very, very, very interesting to watch. Oh well guys, we're going to squeeze a few more of these little infusorias in the water for them. Like I said, they've been picking them off as I've been chatting away. You can see them all going into the water there. So they can have a good old feed of those. Oh yeah, well we've got a few more still to come out. Right in close. You can see those two little guys down there. And let's have a look and you can see their little eyes moving around in those eggs. They'll be looking up at that infusoria going, I want to get out of here. Look at all that food, mate. Yeah, no, I can't wait to get out there and eat some of that. They look lovely. Fantastic. Little beady eyes looking. And you can see those little infusoria coming past in the water as well. Look like a couple of little Pac-Men. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Anyway, um, I'd like to say a big thank you to John. He travelled all the way down from Leeds today to pick up two of my L46 Plecos. Two of them that were big enough to go to, uh, to their new homes. So the rest of them are still too small to be rehoused at the moment. But these two were big enough and he came all the way down. A five hour train trip. Absolutely lovely guy. Met him at the train station. We had a bit of a chat in the car. And um, really nice guy. And I hope you really enjoy your little, your little Zero L46 Zebra Plecos, John. You're a lovely guy. It was lovely to meet you. And I'm going to end this video on there. So uh, as always, guys, you're all stars for me and these two little googly-eyed little dudes down there. You're all stars. Lovely loads. Take care. And I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Take care. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.